questions for Doug? Jalen, the, the last couple of nights, Mark has talked about the group's intentionality. What do you think of when, when you hear that word in terms of the way that you all played during some critical stretches to get the wins the last two nights? Um, I think the biggest thing is when you're having like ugly games and uh, not getting it offensively, it's easy to drift. And, you know, everybody tries to play one-on-one. -on -one. I think we do a good job of holding each other accountable and still trying to play the right way and get the best available look and just stick with it. And the one thing that we can control every game is defense. And we kind of buckled down, got some stops, and, you know, jump start our offense. Yeah, and then I want to ask you about Isaiah Joe. I mean, it just seems like in addition to the threes, there are more and more ways in which he's a threat um, on both ends of the floor. How have you seen him grow in the last few years? Um, I think defensively, he kind of flies under the radar. He's always in the right spot. Um, he's always competing. There's never a night he doesn't compete defensively. And um, even if the shots aren't going in, it doesn't stop how hard he plays. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons he's here. Uh, and he adds so much to our game defensively. When you know somebody's going to be in the right spot every time. Um, rarely makes mistakes. So it's just good to have somebody solid on the team that shoots the way he does and doesn't let that affect you know, the rest of his game. Doug, tonight makes 6-0, and which is the best start in franchise history. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's, it's cool, for sure. Uh, I don't think we're going to get too ahead of ourselves. I think we got to play. Who do we play next one? I know. We've got to play another good team. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll have fun on this three-hour flight back, and then, you know, it's kind of right back to it. But uh, it's definitely a cool thing to kind of write your name in history and, you know, have this be our start, but obviously we know what the we know what we want to do down the line. Yeah, and I just I wonder what you saw in terms of the way you guys defended Zubak. I think he had maybe like ten or twelve or, or more than ten shots. How do you defend Zubak and generally how you think these small lineups with if you at the five or whoever, whatever guard at the five, uh, have played out throughout the year? Uh, a lot of it's just trying to help Chet, so you gotta give him a lot of credit there. Um, Defensively, it just brings so much versatility, and that, that was mainly his matchup. So a lot of credit goes there, and then a lot of it's just being being ready to help each other. And you know, some you got to give a hard foul or just kind of be scrappy, and we do a good job of that. Playing small is something that I've been doing for three years now, and uh, something I'm comfortable doing. And uh, yeah, just kind of from there, just being ready to kind of help Chet out, and obviously until some of our other bigs get back. And uh, yeah, we just kind of find ways to win and defend. And, yeah, so really credit to Chet, and then everybody else kind of ready to help. I asked Coach about um, AJ, and that was a small sample size, but what have you seen from him as far as transitioning into this um, the league, and then what was the hardest adjustment for you, if you can remember? Uh, yeah, he's been great. Um, I think he does a good job not letting the minutes affect how he plays. I think that's something that's contagious about the organization, is how hard people play when they do get the opportunity to come in. Uh, he's handled it really well, even before training camp when we were playing fives. Um, I think just having the college experience he has has helped him, and that's something that I take with me, obviously, you know, doing the same amount of years. Uh, Dylan's another one, you know, when you do that many years of college, I think you just get to learn how to play basketball, and that's, that's helped him and Dylan uh, in the same regard. And then I think just the hardest transition for me was, it really it didn't have anything to do with basketball. It was more like the flights and just trying to like figure out a schedule and a routine and kind of like all this stuff outside of basketball and how to be a professional. And um, it's good now that we have that and we kind of have some veteran guys that help them through that. And they do a good job of asking questions. And uh, I think that that was probably the hardest adjustment was just like, like right now, I'm probably gonna get back to OKC at like 4 a.m. So just trying to navigate that and how to get sleep, how to eat, and do that whole thing. Anybody else? We'll go to, we'll go to Joel. He's gonna be the last one. You know, obviously, you and, and Shea have worked toward raising the volume on, on three, especially Shea. I mean, he had 10 attempts, I think, uh, a few nights ago. Mark was just in here noting that, you know, it felt like tonight. And it like he was getting picked up higher, you were getting picked up higher. Just what is that like to see kind of the work manifest into, you know, the, the coverage tonight? Um, it's good. It means that, obviously, you know, you can't be afraid to shoot the shots you work on. And, uh, I think just like for me, like not even shooting it well tonight or, you know, a couple games ago too. It's just kind of one of those things that you stick with and um, it's a process of getting better. So especially early in the year, 
you want to make shots and you want to, you know, be as efficient as possible. And there's also kind of a gray area where, you know, you're trying to work on your game as well. And so I think the more we shoot them, the higher people have to respect it. And that's one of those things you just can't be afraid to shoot what you work on. So I give him a lot of credit for that because it makes me shoot shots that I don't normally shoot to try and work on later down the stretch. And uh, so it's good when people obviously pick us up higher. It means we're doing something right. Great. Yep. Yep. Goodbye. saw from this team, particularly in the first half, um, to, to keep some grip on the game and um, make sure that you, had, you gave yourselves a chance to have a stretch? Yeah, we, um, there's always, especially in the first half, first quarter of the games, there's so much basketball left. We don't ever really get phased by a slow start, um, a big lead, a big deficit. There's so much basketball left to be played. Uh, and that's just our mentality. Coach always says it's like a 48-minute game, so we try to play and kind of stay in the moment, possession by possession, and not worry about how big or how big the leader deficit is. Um, just play through it and chip away at it, and uh, that's the reason why we were able to turn it around tonight. And Chet, you were instrumental in some of the big stretches in that second half. Tell me about maybe the way that you guys played with intentionality and force in those moments to really take control of things? Um, yeah, obviously just doing whatever it takes to win. You know, not every game is going to be pretty. Not every game is going to feel great. Um, you know, I definitely feel like personally I have a lot to come away from from this game uh, to, you know, continue to get better at and improve. Um, but, you know, you never take a win for granted in this league. Uh, you know, they're not easy to come by. Um, and credit to everybody who stepped on the floor tonight uh, to make that happen. Chet, how were you guys able to take Zubats kind of out of that game? Um, I had some good games to start this year. How are you guys able to make it tough on today? Um, you know, just respecting him as a good player and, uh, you know, keying into what he does well out there and, um, you know, trying to counter that on uh, both ends of the floor. Chet, Mark said at the beginning that uh, Shane's superstar has grown and that if anything he's become more approachable um, that he hasn't changed at all. What have you seen in that sense, just in terms of his humility? Um, I think it speaks volumes to the type of organization that we have uh, from the top down. Uh, you know, if you're not a good person, you don't end up, you know, playing for the Thunder. And uh, he's a testament to that because, uh, you know, he has every opportunity to act however he wants and do whatever he wants because you can't really say much, uh, you know, because you need him to go out there and put up a lot of buckets the next night. Uh, but he doesn't do that. He's, you know, extremely humble guy. And, uh, you know, he's all about basketball. He's all about winning, all about family. Um, you know, he handles his business, shows up, and then, uh, you know, just he's himself after that. So credit to him for that. Shane, you obviously played a, a lot of games at Staples, both as a Clipper and as an opponent. This was your, your first time here at Angelique Tell. What was your first impressions of playing this building? It was cool. Um, Obviously a different feel. Um, the stance feels a little bit more like on top of the on top of the court, kind of like college. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It was you a different feel. It's gonna be cooler. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it was cool though. And then I know we we've asked you about the trade a lot every time you come back, but with the benefit of now five years of, of hindsight and everything that, that you've accomplished in the last five years, just just how things have played out for the Clippers so far, what what comes to mind when, when you look back on it? Good question. Um, I had a great year here when I was here. Um, their front office made a trade that they thought was better for their team. So did the Thunder. Um, and in the last five years, I've tried to focus on my development and the team's development um, and try to be the best basketball player that I could be for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, and I say it worked out in my favor. For, for, for you guys, obviously 6-0 is uh, the best start in the franchise. I'm just wondering what that means to you. Um, it's cool, but it doesn't mean much. There's still 76 games left. Um, we're not even close to what we need to be to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Um, 
which is obviously winning big. So yeah, it's cool. Um, not satisfied at all. Yeah, I, I don't think um, any teams ever hung a banner for a six-game win streak. So um, you know, it's not. It wasn't our end goal in the beginning, but like I said before, you don't take wins for granted in this league, and um, you know we know how much hard work it takes to to do something like that. But you know, we have we have bigger goals that we're working towards. Shame for you. Obviously, you go two or four from three nights the other night. He, he took ten threes. Mark was just in here saying that uh, he felt that you know the Clippers were picking up hard tonight, maybe as a product of all the threes you've taken so far. I just wonder what that's like to see the work kind of manifest into the, the coverage tonight and how you maybe decided to pick your spots. Maybe you should shoot more threes and one not two. Yeah, it, it's, it's not where I want it to be, and I'm going to continue to shoot more. I feel like I could have shot more tonight. Um, but yeah, we won, so all that is minuscule, doesn't really matter, but yeah, I'm going to continue to shoot them and try to shoot more, try to keep the defense honest. And last week, follow up, if I can. Just, sure. Uh, for, for those who think you're maybe shooting too many threes, I guess what would you say to those people? Um, I appreciate your concern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Uh, just, just kind of follow up on that. There's been a lot of talk on social media about whether too many threes are good or bad for the league. I'm curious, how would you guys assess your three-point volume as a team? And do you think you need to be a high-volume three-point shooting team throughout the year to be as successful? At the end? I mean, yeah, I think the game tells you how many threes you need to shoot. Um, I think it's that simple. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how you get it done every night. If you win, that's all that matters. Um, and the teams that have won in the past, maybe a decade or so, I've shot a lot of threes, and I think that's why the league's gone the way it is, because teams want to win. So I think, don't think it has to do with trying to get to a number. It's about winning games. Um, and teams are shooting a lot of threes, and those teams are winning games, so that's where the league's gone. Yeah, we have two more. Again, uh, and shed, and shed. With Alex's body of work, um, you know, winning the championship and all the different intangibles he brings, what impact has it been on the group so far? Yeah, it's been great. He, um, like you said, he's been in the biggest moments. He's been where we all want to go. Um, and he's very vocal about it. Um, he's a great vocal leader. He always says the right thing. When he speaks, people listen. Um, and he's earned that because of his work and, like you said, his body of work. And, what he's put into the game. The game has rewarded him. Um, but yeah, he's been a great asset to this team. Um, and we still feel like we haven't even seen the full form of him, so that's kind of exciting. Last question to Ramon. Uh, this is just a question about your, your point of attack defense, not just you, but your team. Um, what, what, I know you don't have to play against them in the game, but I'm sure you go against Lou and Caruso and as well as all of it. Like, what, is, what is that like for a team to face your defenders on the, on the perimeter? Um, it's, it's for sure challenging. Uh, I can't remember who it was. We were on the bench the other day and we were playing Atlanta. And Lou started on Trey Young and he came out the game and Alex went on Trey Young. Um, and it's very rare that a second unit has an all-defensive perimeter guard on its lineup. Uh, so I can only imagine how difficult that must be for other guards. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we like to use it to our strength and our advantage, um, get into guys and knowing that Chet's behind us to, to clean up and protect. Uh, and I think that's why we're a pretty good defense as far. Chet, I guess a follow-up on that is just what is that like for you to be the, the guy who is the back line there. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing playing with other great players on both ends of the floor. Um, and sometimes it helps make my job easier, too, uh, when they're speeding people up. And, um, you know, people start seeing ghosts out there, um, you know, especially <laughs> when, you know, people are shooting the passing lanes and stealing and then pursuing and getting steals. Uh, it just it makes it tough on people when people start second guessing and hesitating. And then, uh, it kind of just keeps spiraling. Um, so it's definitely like a, a tag team uh, effort out there. Um, you know, no credit goes to one person. Uh, you know, it's five guys out there making it happen at all times. Thanks. Thank you, guys. That's a wrap for the Thunder Review Available tonight.